Thevenin's theorem is a valuable circuit concept and analytical method used to convert a complex circuit into a simpler equivalent circuit. The theorem states, any linear circuit containing several voltages and resistances can be replaced by just one single voltage in series with a single resistance connected across the load. In other words, any electrical circuit consisting of purely passive components resistors, capacitors, and inductors can be simplified to an equivalent two-terminal circuit connected to a load resistor. Thevenin's theorem is especially useful for completing circuit analysis of battery or power systems in addition to other interconnected resistive circuits that will have an impact on the adjoining part of the circuit. This adjoining part can be a load resistor or other circuit network. As noted, Thevenin's theorem was first discovered and published by the German scientist Hermann von Helmholtz in 1853, four years before Thevenin's birth. Thevenin's 1883 proof, described above, is nearer in spirit to modern methods of electrical engineering, and this may explain why his name is more commonly associated with the theorem. Helmholtz's earlier formulation of the problem reflects a more general approach that is closer to physics. In his 1853 paper, Helmholtz was concerned with the electromotive properties of physically extensive conductors, in particular, with animal tissue. He noted that earlier work by physiologist Emile Dubois Raymond had shown that every smallest part of a muscle that can be stimulated is capable of producing electrical currents. At this time, experiments were carried out by attaching a galvano galvanometer at two points to a sample of animal tissue and measuring current flow through the external circuit. Since the goal of this work was to understand something about the internal properties of the tissue, Helmholtz wanted to find a way to relate those internal properties to the currents measured externally. Helmholtz's starting point was a result published by Gustav Kirchhoff in 1848. Like Helmholtz, Kirchhoff was concerned with three-dimensional, electrically conducting systems. Kirchhoff considered a system consisting of two parts, which he labeled parts A and B of part A which played the part of the active network, consisted of a collection of conducting bodies connected end-to-end, -end, each body characterized by an electromotive force and a resistance. Part B was assumed to be connected to the endpoints of A via two wires. Kirchhoff then showed that without changing the flow at any point in B, one can substitute for a conductor in which an electromotive force is located which is equal to the sum of the voltage differences in A, and which has a resistance equal to the summed resistances of the elements of A. In his 1853 paper, Helmholtz acknowledged Kirchhoff's result, but noted that it was only valid in the case that, as in hydroelectric batteries, batteries, there are no closed current curves in A, but rather that all such curves pass through B. He therefore set out to generalize Kirchhoff's result to the case of an arbitrary, three-dimensional distribution of currents and voltage sources within system A. Using this theorem, as well as Ohm's law, Helmholtz proved the following three theorems about the relation between the internal voltages and currents of physical system A, and the current flowing through the linear system B, which was assumed to be attached to A at two points on its surface, for every conductor A, within whose interior electromotive forces are arbitrarily distributed, a certain distribution of electromotive forces can be specified on its surface, which would produce the same currents as the internal forces of A in every applied conductor B. The voltages and current components inside the conductor A when an external circuit is attached are equal to the sum of the voltages and current components that occur in it in the absence of the attached circuit and those of the surface. Different ways of distributing electromotive forces on the surface of the conductor A, which should give the same derived currents as its internal forces, can only differ by a difference that has the same constant value at all points on the surface. Thevenin's circuits can be calculated across any two nodes of a circuit. The circuit consists of a Thevenin voltage source VTH and equivalent Thevenin resistance RTH or ZTH in the case of capacitors plus inductors present. VTH is obtained at the open circuited terminals AB and RTH is obtained with all voltage sources replaced by shorts. Calculating a Thevenin equivalent circuit, in a Thevenin equivalent circuit, between nodes A and B, any complex single port network consisting of consisting of passive elements can be replaced by a single equivalent resistance RTH and voltage VTH. RTH is the source resistance looking back into the circuit while VTH is the open circuit voltage at the terminals. Calculating a Thevenin circuit is done as follows, if it exists, remove the load resistor from the circuit, across the terminals of interest. Determine the voltage across the terminals, this is VTH. You can do this through any circuit analysis method series circuits laws, Ohm's law, or Kirchhoff's voltage law. 
Find the Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH by shorting all voltage sources and open circuiting all current sources. Use laws for resistors in series in parallel to achieve a single equivalent resistance. In the case of reactive components inductors and capacitors, utilize simplification techniques for these elements to ultimately achieve a single complex impedance resistance and reactance. Create a circuit with your Thevenin voltage source VTH in series with your Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH. This is your Thevenin equivalent circuit. It is important to note that the voltage and resistance figures for the Thevenin source and resistor do not correspond to any actual component from the original circuit. Thevenin's theorem is useful for determin determining what happens to a single resistor in the network across terminals A and B, depending on which two nodes are chosen in the circuit, the Thevenin equivalent circuit will be different. In other words, there is one Thevenin equivalent circuit values of VTH and RTH for a complex circuit given two specific nodes, not just the circuit as a whole. Advantages of Thevenin's theorem Thevenin's theorem is especially useful for analyzing circuits by removing the load resistance from the original circuit and simplifying. After reconnecting the load resistance, any later calculations can be carried out as if the whole network were the simplified circuit. If correctly derived, the Thevenin circuit will behave the exact same as the original circuit. The load across the two specified ports will not be able to tell the difference between the original network and the Thevenin equivalent circuit. In analyzing power systems and other circuits where the load resistor is subject to change, knowing the Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance makes it easy to calculate the current through the load, simplifying further analysis. Limitations of Thevenin's theorem Thevenin's theorem is only applicable in specific situations, given a couple of limitations. Thevenin's theorem is applicable only to linear circuits, e.g., only passive resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Thevenin's theorem is not applicable to nonlinear devices such as diodes and transistors. The Thevenin equivalent only has characteristics from the point of view of the load specified nodes AB. Power dissipation for the Thevenin circuit is not necessarily the same as that of the real system. That being said, the power dissipated by the external resistor between terminals AB is the same regardless of how the circuit is implemented. Thevenin's theorem is a great circuit analysis tool to reduce complicated electrical networks into a single voltage and resistor. When looking back from terminals AB, the simplified circuit behaves the same way electrically as the complex circuit it replaces with identical relationships. Thevenin's theorem has several practical applications in electrical engineering and circuit analysis. Here are a few key examples, power systems analysis, Thevenin's theorem is used to simplify and analyze power distribution networks. By reducing complex networks to simpler equivalent circuits, engineers can easily determine the impact of adding or removing loads. Telecommunications, in designing and analyzing communication circuits, Thevenin's theorem helps in understanding how different components affect signal transmission and reception. Electronic device design, Thevenin's theorem is useful in designing and optimizing electronic circuits, such as amplifiers and filters. It helps in determining the best configuration for components to achieve desired performance. Source modeling, Thevenin's theorem is used to model real-world voltage and current sources, making it easier to predict how they will interact with other components in a circuit. Resistance measurement, the theorem is applied in resistance measurement techniques, such as using the Wheatstone bridge, to accurately determine unknown resistances. These applications demonstrate how Thevenin's theorem simplifies complex circuit analysis, making it an invaluable tool for engineers and technicians.